Bishop Hill, Illinois is a small town and historic site located in rural Illinois. Today, it is a sleepy town attracting tourists from Chicago, Peoria, and the Quad Cities of Rock Island, Moline, Davenport, and Bettendorf. But in the 19th century, it was a bustling farm center that played a key role in the growth of Europeans in western Illinois and across the Midwest. I grew up nearby in Cambridge, Illinois, which is the county seat of Henry County. The stories I heard about Bishop Hill were full of drama and struggle. Eric Jansen, the religious prophet of Bishop Hill, was murdered by one of their own people in my hometown in the courthouse, which was only a few blocks away from my own home. The stories that came down to me were about those crazy Swedes over in Bishop Hill. They were a mixture of history and folklore. Bishop Hill's actual history is a fascinating story of survival and growth on the prairie. Looking back, we can glean lessons about immigration, Americanization, and the growth of our region and country. But first, let's take a moment to get our bearings. Bishop Hill is located about 170 miles from Chicago. This is about a two and a half hour drive. It's about 50 miles from Rock Island in the Mississippi River. Today, it is surrounded by rolling farmland and small towns. The original settlers of Bishop Hill arrived in 1846 from Sweden. They were the followers of Eric Jansen, who was a religious leader that preached a form of Methodism. Jansen and his followers had a harsh break with the state-run Swedish Lutheran Church. The Jansenists held public book burnings where they burnt Luther's catechism and other religious texts. The conflict in Sweden grew and the decision was made to emigrate to the United States. They came in contact with Swedish brothers who lived in the United States and they helped them acquire land on the Illinois prairie. They met the first brother in New York and then after their travels across the country, they met the second when they arrived in the land near Bishop Hill. At the time when they left Sweden, they put their money together in common so that all members could afford to make the trip. They traveled from Sweden to New York City. Then they went across by boat across the Great Lakes to Chicago. The able-bodied individuals walked from Chicago to Bishop Hill so those who could not walk and, of course, the supplies and luggage they brought with could be hauled on their wagons. Before I get to the actual settlement of Bishop Hill, let me take a few moments to discuss the religious beliefs of the Jansenists. They believed in a form of perfectionism, which meant that the true believers could utilize the Holy Spirit to gain benefits on earth. They felt that people who lived according to God's word could gain the benefits of heaven immediately. For example, on the journey across the Atlantic, they did not bother to study English. When they arrived in New York, they believed that the Holy Spirit would allow them to immediately speak English. Of course, this didn't happen, so they were very lucky to have English-speaking Swedes to translate once they arrived. For the Jansenists, their arrival in the United States was not just to seek out religious freedom. They were arriving on the prairie to found a new Jerusalem that would eventually be recognized by all people around the world. Their prophet, Eric Jansen, spoke for God and would guide them to a glorious destiny. But before this glory arrived, tough times were ahead. Their journey from Sweden to America took all summer. They arrived on the Illinois prairie in the autumn, which is too late to plant crops. That first winter was harsh, with little food and living in shelters dug into the side of the hill. The surviving colonists would pull out the bodies of those who passed away in the night. Jansen would call on his people to fast to purify their spirits, but in reality, he was trying to preserve what food they had. Over 100 people would die that first winter. In the spring, the colonists that remained began the task of erecting the town of Bishop Hill. As more people arrived from Sweden, the fortunes of the colonists got better. Crops were planted and houses went up. A church was constructed and it looked as though the Jansenists had truly created their utopia on the prairie. The initial 1,400 acres that they owned would eventually grow into 11,000 acres. The Bishop Hill colonists had a second farm near what is today Orion, Illinois. They had a fishing outpost near Rock Island on the Mississippi River. They had land that they purchased, which is in the city limits of Chicago. And they helped start a new town, Galva, Illinois, which was on the train lines. In Bishop Hill itself, a building boom took off. They constructed a large brick building known as Big Brick 
that housed 68 families and had a huge dining hall where all of the colonists ate their meals. They built a bakery, a brewery, a mill, a carpentry shop. The colony store sold to visitors who were staying in Bishop Hill at the newly constructed hotel. Each building the colonists constructed was large and promised future growth. They were preparing to become the new Jerusalem that their prophet had envisioned. But this utopia was soon shattered. In 1849, a cholera epidemic swept through the colony, which killed 143 colonists. During this outbreak, a person who was healthy the day before would get sick in the morning and be dead by nightfall. Jansen made matters worse by claiming that a person who truly believed in his teachings would be immune to the disease. Many sick people went to work in the fields to demonstrate their belief, only to exhaust what energy they had and die at the end at an even faster rate. The colonists weathered this epidemic in 1849, only to face another great crisis in 1850. On May 13, 1850, a defector from the Bishop Hill Colony, John Root, murdered Eric Jansen in nearby Cambridge. Root, a Swedish immigrant who had been traveling around the country for several years, married Jansen's cousin. Jansen would not allow her, his cousin to leave the colony because this would remove her from God's grace. Root, enraged by Jansen, confronted him in the courtroom in the Henry County Courthouse in Cambridge. Root fired two bullets, and Jansen's extraordinary life came to an end. Jansen's followers waited three days before burying the body with the hopes that their prophet may return from the dead, but to their disbelief, Jansen was gone. Despite Jansen's death, the colonists carried on. In 1853, they were officially chartered by the state of Illinois as a socialist community, which allowed the colony to act as a legal entity that could hold property and carry out business transactions. By 1855, the colonists were in the middle of what could be called a golden age. The town of Bishop Hill had grown considerably by this point. Many Swedes had come from their home country and settled in Bishop Hill. Many who settled left for nearby communities. The colonists had built many buildings and amassed a great deal of wealth. They traded crops in St. Louis, Chicago, and New York. Jansen's disciples carried on his religious tradition. But by 1857, things took a turn for the worse. The Depression of 1857 hit the colony hard. Olaf Johnson, the principal economic manager of the board of the colony, who was responsible for the wealth of the colony, had bought the contracts of a large portion of the Western Airline Railroad. During this recession, after the colonists had invested a great deal of money in construction, the Western Airline went bankrupt and left the colony high and dry. Besides this, Johnson had invested the colony's money in other risky ventures. By 1860, the colony's trustees could not hide the economic problems. In 1861, the followers of Eric Jansen divided their property and formally dissolved the, co the communistic ties that held them together. The lawsuits against the colony would not be settled until the late 1870s. In 1860, the Bishop Hill colonists, who were quickly becoming former colonists, were very proud of the fact that they could muster enough men to have a complete regiment of troops to send to the United States Civil War. Throughout Bishop Hill's history, the colonists had written many letters back home to family and friends in Sweden. Some of these letters were published in local papers, helping to spur a major wave of immigration to America. Swedes connected to Bishop Hill settled in many of the nearby towns and helped to change the face economically and culturally of Western Illinois. So now, after all of this history, how do we understand it? There's an opportunity here for interpretation. The popular view is those crazy Swedes which is a story of murder and drama. But we can say for sure some things happened. People showed up, they made a town, they disbanded. Let's take a look at some different ways we can view the history of Bishop Hill. The first meaning that we could take a look at is the idea of the utopia on the prairie. Two interesting colonies that we can compare with Bishop Hill would be the Amana colony in Iowa and the Mormons at Nauvoo, Illinois. Both of these colonies were very similar in terms of immigrant populations and timing. The Amana colony was a very strict colony that cut off ties from the outside. 
They were very insulated, and they lasted much longer than Bishop Hill. They survived nearly 80 years compared to the 14 years of Bishop Hill. On the other hand, we can look at Nauvoo. The Mormons had about 5,000 followers who arrived in western Illinois. They had great conflicts with their nearby neighbors, eventually being run out of town, and as we know, moving to Utah so that they could be even more isolated practicing their religion and building their communities without any outside interference. When compared to Amana and Nauvoo, the Bishop Hill colonists were much more integrated with the local community, and they were much more willing to abandon their colony in the end. The communistic living arrangement is a second meaning that we could take a look at. Of course, the Bishop Hill colonists were not ideologically communistic in terms of Karl Marx, since Marx would not publish the Communist Manifesto until 1848, the Bishop Hill colonists modeled themselves more after the early Christians who all lived together to take care of each other. There are very few communities across the history of the United States who were founded and worked in this way. If it wasn't for the communistic approach that the Bishop Hill colonists used, the individual colonists would have not been able to survive once they arrived in America. And they would not have had the sizable labor force that they needed to open up such large tracts of land. Naturally, this also means that we can view the Bishop Hill colonists as capitalists. From the moment they arrived, they got to work. They were building, growing, selling. They owned land. They brought in the train lines. They founded new towns. Clearly, the Bishop Hill colonists saw an opportunity on the prairies of Illinois. And, of course, it seems like a reasonable argument to say that it is their desire to make money and even their greed that ended up being their demise as they made many bad investments that they could not get out from under. A fourth meaning that we can take away from the history of Bishop Hill is related to immigration. Starting with Bishop Hill in the 1840s, nearly one-third of the population of Sweden would come to the United States. Naturally, not all of them came to Bishop Hill itself. Many moved to other parts of the country, but it is the letters and the connections of the Bishop Hill colonists that really helped get the ball rolling. Bishop Hill's population generally stayed constant at about 700 to 800 people, but somewhere around 2,400 to 3,000 people came through its town. Many of the original people that came from Sweden with the original colonists never even made it to Bishop Hill. They left when they landed in New York. Others left when they hit Chicago. Many stayed in Bishop Hill and then within the first years left. As new immigrants came, they would get started in Bishop Hill and then make connections and move on to other towns. So the colony itself was always in flux with a solid core of people who lived there, but others who came through and used it as a foothold into a new land and a new life. In 1996, to mark the 150th anniversary of the great Swedish immigration to the United States, the King and Queen of Sweden came to America and toured the country. Bishop Hill was one of their stops as it played such a key role in starting the great immigration. A final meaning that we can look at is that of Americanization. How did these colonists go from being Swedes coming to a new land to found a new Jerusalem to being Americanized to the point that they would send a contingent of soldiers to the Civil War? There was a pattern throughout the history of the Bishop Hill colonists. While in Sweden, they were persecuted by the church and by the state, their response was to band together and move to America. In America, they built up the colony and battled against cholera, but they did not disband. They stayed together, and they kept on building. Even after their prophet died, they stayed together and had one of their greatest periods of economic growth. But by 1860, bankruptcy ripped them apart. This is very different from the reactions that they've had in the past and very different when compared to a group like the Mormons who picked up and moved west. I think the most interesting meaning behind the Bishop Hill Colony is how they became American. They took their possessions and they folded themselves into the fabric of western Illinois. Throughout their history, there's ample evidence of interactions with Americans. They came 
to the United States, and they all worked together. But during this time, they were constantly being visited by their neighbors. They sold across the United States. They had their colony store where local people came and bought goods. The Bishop Hill colonists witnessed the success that individuals could have with their own farms and their own lives. And when the last bankruptcy finally faced them, they chose to disband and not stay together, but to join the larger community. The history of Bishop Hill has more to offer than the folklore it has become. It is a tale of crisis and resolution. The final resolution the colonists constructed was to walk the path toward becoming individual Americans. For the residents of Henry County, the Bishop Hill colonists are still those crazy Swedes. But really, the Bishop Hill colonists were no different than any other immigrants. They did have a very unique history, but ultimately, they were seeking a better life in a new land. In the words of former colonist Jonas Olson, it would be a great comfort if we, in our old age, could be spared witnessing the destruction that has recently threatened us. And if our descendants, after we have gone to our fathers, have nobler things to view when looking back on bygone days than a ruined place intended as a dwelling for the people of God. He wrote this in the years after the colony had been dissolved, hoping that those of us in the future would look back on the history of Bishop Hill and take away something more than a failed experiment in communistic religious living. My guess is that he would be quite pleased with the many meanings we can use to look back at this rich history.